Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Gakery, who's currently rolling over his shoelaces. Yes, I am. We've I, been having this, um, this problem problem for I have a massive problem, weeks ladies and gentlemen. In the new studio <laughs> where Luke's been asking for a longer cord. He's I roll over it. Yeah, like, <laughs> What's interesting, I don't know what podcast this happened on, but it's like I roll over the cord, it gets stuck under my chair, and then I can't move. Like, and I'm like stuck there during the interview. <laughs> like the the wire is all tight. Now, so finally have positioned the wire correctly. And I told Ariel after this last one, no shoelace. I rolled over my own shoelace and couldn't move my own foot. And I was like, (laughs) what the heck is going on? Sit still. Jeez. Uh, No, but today's interview, uh, man, we've wanted to have this guy on for a a long time. We reached out a while ago. I don't think it went anywhere. And then uh, recently we reached out to him and he right away was like, yeah, man, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, this guy's a legend in the real estate industry. I mean, one of the, um, I guess, most popular coaches and one of the best out there. And what we get into in this podcast is phenomenal. And the reason why I say that specifically, I know I say that on a lot of our podcasts, but there's an action that he tells you to do that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you apply it, and I actually use it as the action item at the end, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you apply this in your business, you will double your business, if not triple it. Yep. So we're going to bring Tim on in just a second. But first, we would love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed and make sure to drop us a review to let us know how we're doing. And we'll read it on the show this week's. uh, This is actually another comment. So I actually went into our YouTube videos uh, someone had found episode 150 and commented recently. This was four tips for hosting a successful webinar. So this comes from Living Simply. They say, I'm actually preparing for my first webinar. Thank you for all these insightful awesome. tips. I totally agree. There's nothing worse than a webinar that looks like a long lecture-like presentation. Keep up the great content. Love the dynamic between you two. Should put little hearts on Aww. that. That's one of you. <laughs> Damn it. I tried to get a little close, but then I realized I was the mic didn't come with me. So yeah. careful, you might roll over your cord. Distance. All right, everybody. Like I said, if you want to leave a comment on this YouTube video or a review, we will read it here on the show. And now let's get into this week's interview. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Today on the podcast, we have Tim Harris. Now, anyone that's in real estate knows who this guy is, but for any of our listeners that might not know, Tim and his wife, Julie, after 30 years in real estate, are ranked as the number one real estate coaches in the industry. He's the author of the Amazon bestseller, Harris Rules, as well as the host of the number one internationally syndicated podcast for realtors, Real Estate Coaching Radio. Tim, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Tim, it's awesome to have you on. Man, guys, like we just had a conversation. <laughs> we just came I'll off a roller coaster. Green coaster room, man. But it wasn't the green room. But man, I cannot wait for this interview because Tim and his coaching just, uh, you know, he just coaches and everything. He was coaching us about where to live, coaching us with taxes, coaching us with what we should do from a brokerage standpoint. Awesome. I can't wait to jump into it on the interview. I have to tell you, Tim, we listened to an interview with you and Ricky Carruth um, lately. And that's what uh, made us go, oh man, we got to get Tim on the podcast because we heard you and Ricky Carruth having such a great conversation, going back and forth on the difference with coaching and training and all that stuff. I would love for you to bring uh, people up to speed, just a little bit of your background. Uh, obviously, you've been at it for a while. You've been a coach. Tell us what you're kind of doing today and where you're focused. So we're not going to formally congratulate you guys for joining EXP under Julie and I? <laughs> Not it's a yet. teaser. Yeah, but that is a teaser because we're going to talk about EXP on this because Tim is, is trying to recruit us. It's great. I, I, no, no, not trying. Did. Yes. For, <laughs> well, that's the first <laughs> lesson in sales. Assume, Assume the, close. the close. Right. All right. So you guys can't edit this now that we said that. <laughs> well, so, so sorry. I mean, Julie and I sold real estate for about 10 years in Columbus, Ohio. Our first year in the business... Now, I'm 51. This is when we're in our early 20s. We bought our first house when we were 22 and 23. You know, so started investing when we were 22 and 23. We've been married for 30 years this year, which is extraordinary to think about. Congrats. Uh, I, I say that, in, you know, just thinking about the number. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we sold over 100 houses our first year in real estate, between 100 and 200 every year after that. We accidentally got into coaching business when people started asking us to be their coach. We didn't really know what it was. But one of the, the third person that asked us to be uh, his coach 
is, you know, Michael and Robin Borden, who are on the main line in uh, Philadelphia. They're, I think, some of the top agents in Berkshire. They're yeah, amazing. very close to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, have you heard of them? Uh, yeah, but I uh, don't know them personally. Yeah. They're phenomenal. They're phenom- incredible people. Well, so, and then there's, you know, that's how, that's basically the condensed version. And so we sold real estate at a high level. And then honestly, we've been, we, compared to our skill set as real estate agents versus coaches, there's no comparison. We're so much more advanced and, you know, I wish we had been as good selling real estate as we were, uh, as we are coaching and running a coaching business. It's a thousand times harder to do what we've done since we left selling real estate. But I mean, that, that's basically it. We wrote the, you know, we've written a lot of books, but the Harris Rules book has become, you know, it's our publisher thinks it's going to be the best selling real estate book of all time, even exceeding, um, you know, millionaire real estate agent, really? which, would be, which would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. That, that, is, that would be incredible. Well, talk to us a little bit before we jump into the topic of kind of your advice to real estate agents in 2021 with lead generation. Talk to us a little bit about coaching, right? Um, because I am just um, curious, there's lots of coaches out there. Um, how do you find a good coach? Why do you say you guys are the best at coaching and you've done it better than even real estate? I'd love to pick your brain on if someone's thinking about coaching right now, what's the advantages? What's the disadvantages? What should they look for? You know, that type of idea. Well, so ask yourself when you're going to hire anybody, a a coach, let's say, for example, you're going to hire a real estate coach. You should run them through four filters. Filter number one is that, so I'm thinking about hiring Bob as my real estate coach. So I'm an agent. I don't, I have certainly never hired, maybe I've never even had a coach before in any aspect of my life. So I really don't know what questions to ask, you know, Bob about being my coach. So the first question I should ask Bob is, have you sold real estate before? If Bob hasn't sold real estate before, that immediately in my mind should absolutely positively make Bob not eligible to be my real estate coach. Now, I'm not saying Bob might not have specialized knowledge and he might be incredible at something specific, but he's never sold real estate before. And I, if I'm an agent and I'm, and I'm serious about being successful, the very first thing I should do is hire someone that's proven to be essentially as sold real estate or, or have a license at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can set this bar so damn low, it doesn't matter. You know, have a license. Mm-hmm. Next question I'd have for Bob is, okay, Bob sold real estate before. Go Bob. Now we're going to ask the next question. Has Bob sold at least 100 houses in a year? Now, if you find a, someone who's a real estate coach, who's had a real estate license, who's sold 100 houses in a year, you're on your way. Mm-hmm. This person is definitely going to be one, you know, a single percenter as far as the number of people that are actually, you know, coaches. Right. Now the next question is, and I would ask Bob this question. So I'm I'm still on the phone with Bob. Okay, you've had a license, you've sold over hundred houses a year. Now, here's the question though that follows that. Has Bob sold over hundred houses per year for at least five years in a row? Because Bob could have very well uh listed his subdivision. You know, listed a building in Miami and sold the building out. He kind of had his uncle Bob's, you know, Great uncle Bill could have listened, you know, farmland, who the hell knows, right? So there, so did he actually sell over 100 houses per year consistently for at least five years? To me, that would matter. I, if I'm going to hire someone and I'm going to entrust my future with that person, the very least I'm going to expect them to have done is as be where I want to be one day, right? And the last question, and this is where it went. So I'm still on the phone with Bob. All right, Bob's, you know, he's licensed, sold over 100 houses uh, one year, sold over 100 houses five years in a row. The fourth question is, is Bob had over 10,000 paid one-on-one coaching calls? 10,000? Oh, yeah. ten. Yeah, definitely. And in the industry, in the industry, there's probably, um, I bet you there's fewer than, I would be surprised if there's five people that meet that uh, fourth criteria. Yeah, I was going to say I, that. That's I'd really hot. Yeah, well, because look, license over 100 houses uh, for one year, over 100 houses for five years, uh, 10, 000. no, 10,000 isn't that. If you're full time and you're doing, you know, I guess if you're doing five, yeah, eight hours a day at least, then that's right. Yeah. You're a full time professional who's d- had enough one on one coaching calls that you have become earned the right to truly call yourself a coach. In my mind, the people like when someone says they're an expert, okay, prove to me what you've done. And someone says, like, this in, this world that we're in right now, with all the social networking and whatnot, people use words which used to have different meanings, right? Yeah. So you could call yourself an expert. <laughs> He's laughing. No, it is funny. I'm trying to be nice, by the way. But people will claim the mantle of some level of expertise when they have not done anything to actually create, to actually earn that. But because there's no checks and balances in, in the world anymore, I can call myself an expert at um, you know playing basketball. I'm five nine. I promise you, I do not know about playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? I had three hundred recently. I watched, 
I had like 300 uh, social media experts that just graduated college apply for a job. <laughs> okay, I was, I was going to make fun of that particular category, but isn't that shocking? And back in the short sale arena, there was short sale experts who paid $300 to be short sale experts, but never had done one single short sale. So in my mind, if I'm a consumer and I'm trusting the word expert to mean you actually have earned the right to call yourself an expert, that's a little bit, I don't know, that's a little bit fuzzy for me. That seems a little bit sketch. You guys getting what I'm saying here? Yep. Again, trying not to piss well, anybody do you, off. I don't, I don't know if we want to go down the road, of, but how do you get the 10,000 hours then or the 10,000 calls? Yeah, it's not even hours, dude, because each of those calls are a half hour. How you do it is you do it for a long period of time. You start every morning at 5. You know, we started every morning at 4.30. Our first call would be at 5 a.m. And we did it every year consistently. And we, I have stopped personally doing a lot of one-on-one coaching only probably about 18 months ago. Okay. You know, Julie, Julie, if Julie and I put on our podcast today that Julie and I are looking for you know 20 personal one-on-one coaching clients, we would get 100 people that are messaging us wanting to be coaching clients. But we, it, we just don't. I mean, Julie still has, I bet you she has maybe 15 or 20 clients. Now we have coaches that work for us mm-hmm. and we have thousands of people in our premier coaching program, but I'm talking about one-on-one coaching call. One well, yours is now you're coaches. coaching the coaches, right? You coach yeah, the coaches. Oh, no, truthfully, Julie does. Okay. I don't. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about. One on not. Okay. So you're asking his, his question is actually really uh, intuitive actually. So a one uh, a coach coaching is a one. This is the conversation I had with Ricky. Who, by the way, I Ricky's great. I used to coach Ricky. Yep. I, I didn't know I was on Ricky's only coach, which is really cool. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm super proud of what he's done for his career. It's yeah, amazing. Awesome. <clears throat> but I mean, we talked about the difference between coaching and training. And Ricky, unless and he he said it too. You know, an honorable man he is. He said, "I am doing training unless someone calls me, and then I'm having a direct conversation with them. Only them on my coaching. Mm. So doing doing a YouTube video that someone's watching is that coaching? Mm. I don't think so. So what's training versus coaching? Now we're getting into the weeds, and I guarantee you, hardly anybody cares at this point. But like <laughs> when you're teaching and you're in front of a classroom and you're teaching, uh, that's teaching. When you're tutoring, you know that's coaching in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's Get a gr- yeah great way to break down the analogy. Well, what do you make of the like the argument of like Bill Belichick can't throw the football like Tom Brady, but he's Tom Brady's coach. Well, not anymore, but what, what's your thought process there? Like Bill Belichick's not going to be the best right athlete. So if Tom Brady wanted a coach, he's not going to go find the person who can throw the football better than him or something like that. What, what's your thought process there? How many other Bill Belichick's are there? I mean, can you give me another example like that? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. I don't know any. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. So pick the unicorn, right? Yeah. But no, some people. Some people will have. You know. It, but you, you get my know, point. My overall point of like. Oh, I do. But do you guys know what stolen ball, valor is? Have you heard that term before? No. Okay, so I'm big into reading and listening to Navy SEAL books. That's what I do on the weekends, basically. Love that. And so stolen valor, that valor is when someone acts like they were in the military but never were. Hmm. You know, they might wear dog tags or they're going to, you know, they're going to literally wear desert camo through the airport. So people will think they're, you know, wow. uh, forward deployed service. Yeah, that's it's called stolen valor. So and and that is something we can all agree is just gross if you do yep. that. If you've never served our country. And we have a lot of podcast listeners that are uh, forward deployed. And we know that because we look to see where the downloads are happening and they're happening where military bases all over the world. Now that's badass. Right? That is awesome, man. That is, is that is totally awesome. Cool. We saw listenerships picking up around the world. There was 61 different countries and Julie and I are going, why the hell would anybody listen to us there? And then we uh, thought, well, let's Google where the military bases are around the country and, and around the world. And that's where the listeners were picking us up from for deployed active service people. I am so proud of that. But in honor of that, if I were to start acting like, and I get a Navy SEAL tattoo, I have no tattoos, but I start acting like I was ex-military, that's stolen valor. I'm essentially taking credit for something I never did. Can we agree that that's a little gross? Yep. Mm-hmm. Can we agree that it's immoral? Yeah. Uh, or at yeah. least unethical, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. That's, a, that's the same thing in my mind of calling yourself a real estate coach if you don't meet those four criteria. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's like, um, I totally agree that you, when like one of the keys to finding a mentor, tr- keys to finding a coach is, is this person, has they, have they accomplished what you're trying to achieve? Like, totally. ha- are they down the road? Like, I think a business mentors for myself, right? I'm looking for mentors who, like our company's in the 50 million range. And I'm, I'm not that anything against people who have $10 million company, right? Or anything like that. But 
this next level, I'm looking for people who have a hundred million dollar company, two hundred million that they, they've grown an organization or have a thousand employees based upon our trajectory. Everybody's unique, but our trajectory, what we're trying to accomplish. And so, you know, I totally buy into, hey, you got to find someone that's been there, that's done that, that's proven. So let it. me ask you, let me ask you a question about what you just said. You, so you have a fifty million dollar year company. What's more impressive? Now, you're, do companies like yours? You're going to say yes because I'm sure they do, and I'm sure you have the answer to the question right at the tip of your tongue. But what companies like yours have sold in the marketplace or gone public? Is your company, is this something you guys are going to ride into the horizon? Or is this company something would be an acquisition target? Or do you have visions of taking it public or none of the above? Um, I would love to stay private because you can control your own destiny. You know, I always tell people, look, GoDaddy, right? Who's a behemoth in the small business marketing space has about 20 million small business customers. We have, you know, we'll work with maybe 42,000. This year, so I think our trajectory wise is we can grow. Maybe, maybe we won't make it to twenty million, right? My tenure here as a leading the company, <laughs> but could we get to a quarter of a million small business customers? Like, so I think if we could stay private, grow it to a couple hundred million dollars, that would be phenomenal. So one of the challenges, not necessarily for you guys, I'm just saying in general, is that you will get an agent, for example. This, oh, let's use a broker as an example. Most brokerages have uh, margins of less than three percent. They're making no money. Jeez. But the old joke, the old joke is being a broker just makes you broker. And at a time like now, where buyer agent commissions have been uh, absolutely shrinking in most major markets around the country, it used to be this. Now it's this. Now it's actually way less in some markets. And in some markets, we're seeing, and we're not certainly coaching agents to do this, but agents are actually giving up their buyer agent commission in the offer to get the seller to accept their offer over the 20 others just for the sake of you know making the sellers net better because there's no buyer agent commission Jeez. you know so there's all so the buy the, the brokerages uh the, you know margins have gotten so condensed that most brokers have never stopped selling mostly listing uh or having to go back to subsidize their business now the and here's how the real estate brokerage that's so that's the plague that's facing the industry and the same thing is happening with teams obviously because most teams, so people in the industry, in our industry, love to, to talk about uh, number of units or total dollar volume. You just said 50 million. So I have a coaching client. His name is Rob Johnson, and he's in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. I've coached, Julian, I've coached him since he got his real estate license, which wasn't that long ago. And I'm pretty sure he's number one in Greenwich. So he has, uh, he'll do 130 to 140 million this year. He has one assistant. His profit margin after his broker split, which is not very much, is at least 90%. He makes Jeez. massive money. Now, okay, so how does that compare to the average team? I'm kind of bouncing around, but hopefully people will track on this and it'll benefit them. When you hear, uh, a, like, we'll get a team that will call us uh, or a small brokerage. Well, I'm pivoting to teams. And the team will be somebody who has a million dollars in GCI. And let's say there's some place in the Midwest and they've got four to six buyer's agents and they run, win every plaque, every award, every they have in their marketplace, they're seen as real estate gods. Julie and I get their profit and loss statement when we look through it. And that team's, this is before they've hired us, just being, this is what we see on average. That team will be making a, um, a profit margin. The guy who started it, you know, the Bob who started it, is going to be making maybe 130 to 150 grand before his personal expenses and personal taxes. You follow me? Yeah. So he had a million dollars and he basically is making 13 to 15%. Now, this was before. Now, with what's going on now with buyer agent commissions is probably less, but let's just stick with that number. Now, Betty calls us to be uh, her uh, her coach. She joins our organization, and Betty's total GCI is only about two hundred grand. But Betty's net profit—it's just Betty, and occasionally she hires a VA or somebody to help her. You know, Betty's profit margin is at least the same as the guy with the big team. So the question I have to ask, and this is you know, I think personally this is the most important question when you're running a business. Is are you doing it just to boost up your numbers because you're in a tech business, so you can get a 13 or a 20x multiple for your business? Or are you doing it to basically the business, in, in our opinion, the whole, your product of your business is profit. And if you're not making profit, you're running an unprofitable business by definition, right? Yeah, you're, you're running a slave a to profit. it. Yep. Yeah, because most businesses aren't worth and most businesses in the real estate industry aren't worth anything. The only benefit you have from uh, running a real estate business is it pays for your lifestyle. But if you're not running a lot of profit out of your business because you're not re you're running it based on volume and units, you're not going to have that with that profit. You have to then reinvest it so you can become rich. And rich, don't be offended by that word. Some people are. 
It's simply where your money works for you. You no longer have to work for your money. Mm. You follow me? Yeah. So that's, there's two, and, and Glenn Sanford, the XP CEO says this. He says, that, and it's absolutely true, is that it's two things agents can't do. Uh, they can't save for retirement. And they don't pay their taxes on time. So if you think about why, it's because this industry is addicted to focusing on how many units did you sell? What was your total dollar volume? How big is your team? How big is your, you guys are spending more money on branding. Well, let's have a conversation about what's going to lead to generating the most profit, the quickest in which that profit you pull out of the business, you don't reinvest it, not all of it anyway. And then you buy things that are going to build your net worth. You know, you buy things that are going to essentially compound over time. People don't understand, you know, compounding interest. They don't understand how just everything. And there's, there's a real, in my opinion, uh, it's sort of like this bizarre relationship between brokers and agents. Agents are kept uh, focused on things that are going to motivate them through ego, no, not motivate them through profit. Dude, you sell 10 more houses. Okay, you're a successful agent now. You've got, you, you sold 25 houses. It's time for you to add an assistant. Now add three buyer's agents. Now add overhead, add overhead. Nobody ever takes the time and no one ever says, okay, well, here's what is going to happen if you build a team. Here's what's going to happen if you start uh, passively lead generating to your profit margin. It's going to go away. And when you have one, two, or three bad months, and you've burned up your personal savings, you are going to be broke. Nobody tells them that. Mm. And Julie and I have been in this coaching for long enough. We've seen these cycles. And we're basically at the tail end of the buying leads cycle. That is coming to an end. Um, it absolutely okay. is. So anyway. <laughs> Man, there's so many, so much in that. One is I agree with you. The golden nugget is it's not what your revenue is. It's what you actually take home. And a lot of that's dictated by the life that you want and your vision for your life. But let's talk real quick. Let's not lose the thought on the leads going away, yeah. the buying of leads. I really want to pick your brain on that. Why do, you, why do you say that? Oversaturation, basically. I mean, it's just like any good idea. It's like when Julie, so when Julie and I were selling real estate in the 90s, it was, it was Realtor.com was online. Now, when Realtor.com came online, uh, that was a killer way to get leads. But they let you put hypertext links inside the descriptions of your listings. You guys weren't around. I don't. You guys came in at, at after you know 2000. I'm sure. So <laughs> yeah. uh, can you imagine a national portal that let you put hypertext links in a description, <laughs> so you could do your own lead generation right on their backbone of a listing for sale? It yeah. was amazing and free, right? Wow. And then then it all changed. Uh, and I remember when Google Pay Per Click came online. I sound like I'm a thousand years old, but I remember when Google Pay Per Click. It was over a holiday. It was over Christmas. And I read an article, and and I this was probably this was maybe in the early two thousands, I think. Mm -hmm. And I read no, I'll tell you, I think it was ninety nine or ninety nine or two thousands. Julie had just turned thirty, so mm -hmm. I remember over the holiday weekend, boom, Google Pay Per Click. I'm gonna check this out, and I started running Pay Per Click ads, and that worked phenomenal. I remember when SEO worked. I remember when all that worked. None of it works anymore. Not like it did, and, but people are still selling it as if it does. Like, I'm I'm curious, like, what do you think, like, you take the Zillows, right? So you have a lot of agents that are paying a ton of money for, for Zillow and Zillow's transitioning now to where they don't even give you the leads, I think, until they vet them themselves. I think it was Tom, uh, to mention another coach, I think he's one that is predicting that 50% of all the transactions will have a referral fee uh, associated with them in the future. But, but it, doesn't have, it doesn't have to be that way. Why would you pay a referral fee if you can generate your own lead? And you just said something, and I'm not going to grind on anybody. But if I'm getting a lot, if I if our company is getting a lot of uh, money for doing different events, and, you know, sponsorship from tech companies, I'm obviously going to carry the burden of having to essentially be uh, indirect spokesperson for those companies that are subsidizing my business. We don't have anything like that. We we get offers. I'm sure you guys do too. Constantly from people wanting to run sponsored posts and be on my podcast, and they'll pay us money. And blah, 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 blah. Tim and Julie, come and speak here. You're going to be you know, speaking under our banner, but we'll pay you this amount of money. We never do it because we have to keep our message pure to what's best for the real estate agents, even if it's at the cost of our own financial detriment. And we'll always do it. So the idea that 50% of all transactions are going to have an, a referral fee attached to them, that's true if you don't know how to proactively lead generate. That's true if you pop in the business and the first thing you do is you basically start buying leads and you think that's you know, what you're supposed to do. That is not what you're supposed to do. So how are you coaching people? How can, how can agents generate leads uh, themselves without having to go the buying route? Um, sandwich boards uh, on intersections. <laughs> on pizza, Works every pizza time. suits. Buy <laughs> yeah. spinners. Yeah. Well, well, here, here, here let, me, let me answer the question. I think a more beneficial way to your guys' listeners. 
Imagine a spoke, uh, 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 you know, a bicycle wheel, right? And so there's a circle, and then there's a sub, you know, the hubs in the middle, and then there's a lot of spokes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you're gonna, if you're riding down the road and you're and you have that front wheel, and that front wheel's only got it has no spokes, obviously it has no integrity. It can't even roll technically. But the second you hit, like, say you have one spoke, and the second you hit a pebble and the road, the wheel's gonna collapse, right? Okay, so there's that. And so what we coach agents to do is build spokes on their wheel that are not predicated on having to buy leads. And the ideal real estate agents business have seven strong spokes and they're all proactive lead generation. Hopefully you understand that analogy. But here's really the answer to your question. If you're buying your business, and this is, this is something I, I think if you guys, can, if people conceptually get this, they're going to see the uh, absolute insanity of buying all their business. So your first spokes have to be proactive lead generation. They cannot be bought business. After you do the proactive lead generation, if you want to buy business, you can, but you won't have to because you'll be a proactive lead generator. Hmm. Would you guys would you guys build a mansion on uh, ground you don't own, on land you do not own? Would you build a mansion on land you do not own? Would not, no. Isn't that what an agent who buys their business is doing? Hmm. Yeah, it's a good uh, good analogy. We agree, hundred well, yeah. percent. Look, look at EXP for example. Okay, which Julie and I are probably associated with EXP. If you look at uh, what happened recently with Dave Ramsey, so for for uh, for basically undetermined reasons, now it don't it fifty seven thousand agents in EXP. There's probably going to be seventy five thousand by the end of the year. But if you look at what, so Dave Ramsey just summarily said, well, we're not going to be doing business with EXP agents anymore. There was a you know a group call. Guess what? If you're EXP, you have to now switch to a different brokerage. Otherwise, we're not. You're no longer going to be an EXP ELP. Now, supposedly there was two or three hundred agents in EXP that were affected by this, and Glenn Sanford is essentially, you know, taking that as a motivation to build a competing uh, ELP type system uh, for EXP agents exclusively. I'm sure it'll be phenomenal. Don't piss a billionaire off is the takeaway from that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, seriously. Just, that's dumb. Yep. Okay. So but anyway, so, uh, but I, I had some of these agents who are coaching clients and they're in our group at um, EXP and they came to us and they're like, oh, holy crap. I made, you know, some of them had made low six figures off of it. And they knew that they should, what some of them had done is they'd become overly reliant on, on that as the source of business. So they were building their, you know, lifestyle and their business on ground that they didn't know. And just like that, it was taken away. Mm. You guys are, you guys are, you know, old enough to remember when, uh, how often does Google now unofficially without announcing it, change their search criteria? Yeah. Yep. Like all the freaking time. What's it called now? Like fuzzy bunny or something. And all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, all your SEO work is just exploded. You mentioned Zillow. The Google slap. Yep. Yeah. Well, right. Well, let's, let's, let's look at, let's look at Zillow. Zillow. We're never going to be a brokerage. Well, fast forward 10 years, and now they're a nationwide brokerage. Yep. They, they're basically a real, competing real estate brokerage. How many agents have be, built their businesses on buying leads from Zillow right. who are now essentially in a situation, right? Well, so what, are, so, the, what are the seven spokes? I mean, may, uh, like the, the seven, you said seven proactive lead generating one, spokes. First, first one we always tell people to do is, is now it depends on who it is. There's no one size fits all answer to your question. It's the reason I was giving you the broader explanation, but since you're drilling down, that's great. So the first thing for most people, 99% of our going, centers of influence of the past clients. And, the, and we do it, we ask them to do totally it predicated on, on simple phone calls, not giving away, you know, chat Right. No, simple phone calls. And we give them, we give them conversation outlines, aka scripts to say, but they're very simple, unobtrusive, um, you know, friendly. And so we, that's the first spoke. And once they develop that spoke, and there's no like, you're not really effectively done with any of the any of the spokes effective ever, because you always got to be evolving them and changing them. But that's the first thing we would do for virtually everyone. Now, if you came to us and you have a developed centers of influence and past client, then I'd ask you this question. Because most everyone's going to be resistant to the real answer to your question. But I'm going to ask, ask you guys a question. You guys are an ancillary in the real estate business, right? Which yep. effectively we are as well now. Yep. So I'll ask you this question. If you guys had to take, I know you don't sell real estate, but just yep. bear with me, uh, five listings by the in the next 30 days, not five leads, not five, maybe one days, five listing contracts signed in the next 30 days, how would you do it? And the answer to your question is obvious. 
the Sydney. answer to, to the answer to our question or your question is obvious. Well, the answer to his question is obvious based on what I just asked you guys. But oh, you guys oh, oh. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling this is going to be an edit right here where you guys are just going to say brilliant stuff. So, so no, smart. no, there's no edit here. There's no edit here. I mean, if I had to get five listings in the next how many days? How many month? You gave me how many days? Did you give me. I'm going to make it even better. You have to take five listings in the next 30 days, and you're going to lose your house. Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, so a couple things I would do. One is I call all my sphere. After I call all my sphere and check in, see if there's any opportunity there. Then I go to where the listings are actually happening, right? So I would go and I probably do expired listings, FISBO, okay, open houses. Stop. Okay, you, you the correct answer. You give them a gold star. G- so, give me so a gold star. Someone send me. Where's those gold coins? Yeah. Gold star. But but, but, but see, but, but look how But you didn't let me get to my is. you li- didn't let me get to my other thing. I was gonna say circle prospecting around listings that just went no, under contract. Be, no, don't, don't the circle prospecting should not be but that's my on, last. That's my last one. Last, right? Yes. So you go so it, this is an exercise that Julie and I do back when there was live events. You remember that like two years ago? Yeah. So we we we'd be in front of a group of people and we we'd walk in. Now, if they're podcast listeners, they'd always bust us because they knew what we were doing. But we'd walk in with a, a like a, a stack of paper, and there was nothing on the paper; it was all blank. I'm giving away all my routines, but that's okay. <laughs> and I'd say, and I would say, we've got a list here of you know two or three hundred people who have their hands in their air right now that want to sell their home. These are two or three hundred people, and I'm going to start a live auction right here, and I put it down on the podium. And I would say, these are two or 300 people that have self-identified of wanting to sell their houses in the next 30 days or less. Now, depending on the source, they've acknowledged the fact they work at the real estate agent. They've acknowledged the fact that they'll pay a commission. I'm going to start the bidding out for these two or 300 leads at $100. And I would do that. I wouldn't let it go too far because I don't want anyone to... I don't want to uh, overly dram- dramatize the point. There is no limit to what agents will pay. And I'd say, well, guess what? Here's the good news. It's free for all of you guys. And then I would tell them all the proactive lead generation sources. Yeah. Then I would say, so then I would say this, why the hell are you spending so much time on TikTok? If your goal is to make a listing, why are you spending so many time making YouTube videos? And I know I'm offending some people, but just think about it. Mm. If your goal is to help people and make money, why aren't you going to go for the people who've always already self-identified as needing help? It makes no sense, the stuff that's being taught in real estate right now. You have to build your brand. Well, let's ask, what, what's the word brand? It's been conflated with reputation, right? The modern like influencer, all this stuff, right? And so what is your brand? Ultimately, if that word is essentially in the modern zeitgeist, it wasn't even used like it's being used 10 years ago. It's, it's changed. It's morphed into something else. Agents are being sold to believe that they can uh, build their brand, which will be essentially replacing their lack of a good reputation, for fruit. Not, not good, but being uh, successful having sold real estate. So in other words, they think that their branding and their marketing is somehow going to confuse the public in such a way that the public is not going to be smart enough to discern them from someone who else has actually been successful selling real estate. That's how it's being sold. Wouldn't you say... Sorry to cut you off. You can finish. Go ahead. No, I have a feeling I'm walking into a landmine. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. No, I'm just kidding. No, No, here's what I was going to say. I actually... I think I, I, I do understand your point, right? But... I would say like the TikToks, right? The YouTubes, whatever. Make your brand thing of choice, content, right? That is like, how do you build and develop top of mind awareness with your Ah, sphere? Call people. Why would you even think like that? But listen to me here. Listen to me here, right? Because I I actually 100% agree with calling people. Everybody who, who knows me knows that because we teach even with our product. Hey, the key is you want to follow it up with a phone call because it's in that physical personal relationship that you're going to have that you know, great interaction. You're going to be able to find the opportunity. But you know, most of the time, you, don't, you can call someone, let's say once a month, once every two months, whatever your rotation is. You still want to be in front of them with items of value that build trust, that build okay. like ability. I, I actually agree with you. I agree with you. Remember, we sold real estate. So, so if, you're, if you're offline or you're, uh, if your proactive activities are being enhanced by passive activities. Yes, I 100% agree with you. Okay, so that, that's the like, clarity like I wanted guys, to... In, in your guys' product, your Homes Magazine, Julie and I did a Homes Magazine back in the 90s. So conceptually, I 100% agree with you. But the home... But I, I, won't, I won't be... I won't, direct, I won't say what I was about to say. <laughs> no, say it. Say it. <laughs> okay, okay, because okay, I'm reinforcing what you said. And I'm yeah. going to do my best to help your subscribers, okay? Our Homes Magazine, when we'd mail it out, we'd get no results. 
versus when we'd mail it out and we'd actually supplement it with calls. Yep. Everything is 100% enhanced with calls. Spot now, Spot on, man. It's spot on. But, but let me just predicate this. If you are having to choose between picking up a phone and doing some sort of paid marketing, the picking up the phone is going to get you a thousand X results than just doing the paid could, lead generation. Could not agree more. You know, when I sell people, no joke, right? When I'm on the phone selling agents, I literally tell them, look, you can send an orange to somebody and pick up the phone and call. Like literally like that is the key. So you don't have to do a magazine. If you want to send a magazine out and get listing training from the sky, it's not going to happen. What this is, is a tool that will give you an opportunity to have a really easy phone call where you can call up and literally go, hey, we're sending you a gift. I got mine. There's this great article, whatever it is, but it gives you the ability to have a nice conversation and then do what you do best, which is strengthen the relationship wherever that leads. Maybe it's for referrals at that moment. Maybe it's for... I agree because we've experienced it personally through our coaching clients. But here's what's happening in the industry. Agents are skipping the proactive lead generation. They're not learning how to sell. They're not learning how to have a conversation that's going to you know, move the conversation. And they're skipping right to the paid lead generation because the paid lead generators are being uh, amplified by all the people who are coaches who are being uh, you know, essentially financially fortified from the paid lead generation sources. And mm. so if you've, only, if you've only been, see all that rhyme, that was pretty good. <laughs> so, so That's a clip you, for our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Old man in Puerto Rico raps. So if you've, only, if you've only been in the business since 2007, I remember when Zillow came online and uh, I saw all the agents who were wanting to learn how to be proactively generators go, holy crap. Because when Zillow came online, that was a honey hole too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. For age, early movers, honey old, but then it got oversaturated. So if you've only been in the business since 2008, the probability of you actually having learned any real sales skills, again, if you had to take five listings in the next 30 days, you're going to lose your house. I promise you guys, and you guys know this, I can tell. You know, And what you're saying is honest and I respect that because how can you get on other podcasts when the people are social networking gurus, they hate what I say. And I, and I enjoy... <laughs> that's, because, that's because I'm not saying they haven't really built a business, but they probably haven't built much of a... Of oh, a dude, you're such, you're, such, you're such a millennial hater. You, oh my God. Well, here's God. the thing, man. I'm a millennial myself. I'm 32, but I tell people, you know how we built Reminder Media? We have 120 people on the phones. We have 120 people on the, ref- the phones. And guess what? We, we prospect and we get clients and when we treat them right and we ask them for referrals. And, 100%. And that's well, how it's we built funny. it. It's funny too. When you have agents, like we'll say this on our podcast. So Julie's had a real estate license and we, and, and you know, she's with EXP Realty. So we get these solicitations from all these companies. That, and so it's like, hold on, you're wanting me to buy internet leads, but you called us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that's hilarious? Well, so, we're, we're testing, we're doing a beta test with Facebook leads right now, yeah. right? And we have a bunch of agents. One of, my, one of the agents in is my brother, right? And, he, and he's building his business off of phone calls, phone calls to his sphere, phone calls to, to, that's how he's building it, right? And he's a superstar producer. And with the Facebook leads, we have people in the beta that it's very clear, it's becoming very clear to them. Oh my goodness, the secret is the calls. And we're like, yes, this is only to give you an opportunity to pick up that phone and call someone who's all raised right, their right. hand. Okay, so I have a question for you. And this is where I'm going to be totally self-serving. Yes. If they want to learn how to do what you're talking about doing, most of them have, there's nobody that's taking an organized approach except what Julie and I do. Tim and JulieHarris.com to teaching agents how to do this in conjunction with the passive lead generation. Love it. So for example, if they were to go online, they were to Google real estate scripts. What most of them are going to do is patchwork quilt a bunch of stuff together. But the, the subtlety, like, um, like when you, when you look at a great actor, for example, you can give the script to me. Right. And I'm going to read it and, and no one's going to feel any emotions by what I say. If I'm, you know, if I'm competing against say, who's your favorite actor? Who, who you guys have is your favorite actor? I like myself a little Brad Pitt personally. <laughs> oh, you know, I like Brad Pitt too. Seriously. I think he's great. Yeah. All right, let's go with Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, I totally agree. And that guy under freaking appreciated. Would you agree? Underappreciated. That's because he's so beautiful. Oh, is, yeah, it's crazy. All right. So if you give Brad Pitt the same script you give to me, I mean, Brad Pitt, you're going to be like, what? Right. With me, you're going to go like next. Right. <laughs> because I'm not an actor because I haven't been trained because I don't know what to say, how to say it. It's how you go about delivering the words. It's the emphasis so on different words. It's the whole nuanced approach to sales that people think they can skip over. But here's the thing. I give agents the credit. You guys are, you know, agents are at their heart entrepreneurs, whether they know it or not. But most of them get into the business and they're over. They're essentially thrown in the deep end 
with all these bad ideas that are just going to make them broke. Nobody stops to have any of the conversations we just had. Why don't you learn how to proactively lead generate? Why don't you actually hire someone that's going to teach you what to say and how to say it? I, you know, and, and, and versus the tsunami of it that comes out of them about buying business, building your brand, work on your logo. Like there's an Inman article. We, <laughs> this is okay. I'll, I'm going to make fun of an Inman article just for a second. And I, Brad Inman, I've known since 1996. Okay. But here I'm going to make fun of his article. So there is an article, the end, what happens if this is two weeks ago? What happens if the, you know, agents just stop buying buyer leads or whatever it was, right? That something of the article, you guys can find it. Mm. So the whole article was talking about people saying buying, you know, leads has become oversaturated, lead quality sucks. It's da 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 da. All the reasons why they used to do it and they don't do it anymore. I'm like, my people, they get it, right? And then the pivot was, okay, so if you're no longer going to buy leads, what are you going to do? You know what their answer was? Buy leads just a different way. <laughs> there's, there's, seriously, Paying it went from site for. <laughs> Do this. There is well, but but here, I, I I felt sorry for them because they didn't realize that what they were saying is going to lead them to the same place where they're building their mansion again on somebody else's land. 100%. So they went from buying leads from the big portals to pivot, no more buying leads in this article. And then the second part was, what are you going to do instead? Well, we're going to work on our SEO. Uh, you know that train has already left the station. We're going to do. You're going to buy leads again. Okay, Logan Paul. Uh, who I'm not, I, I have come to actually have respect for him and his brother in a way. Guy's a genius, people, genius they live, He is. He absolutely is. They live in our neighborhood. But I'll tell you on a side story. So what's his brother's name? Jake, right? Yeah. So I, I Julie and I, we, we walk in our community six miles almost every day. So we saw Jake and his trainer work. He was pulling this massive freaking heavy bag up this really steep hill to a helipad of all things, uh, up this really steep hill. Again and again and again. And he was doing it at around, and we live in Puerto Rico. It was super hot. It was around 1 32 o'clock in the day, up and down, up and down. And Julie and I watched it. And I thought to myself, that guy is not, that guy's really taking what he's trying to do seriously, right? Mm. That's somebody that's, you know, for real. But, but if you look ultimately at what those guys have done, and I'll use his brother now, Logan, as an example. Logan, and I only do this after he lived here. I did some homework, moved here. I did some homework on him. So Logan started out his social networking, making videos on uh, Vine. Yep. Is that, that's, from your, yep. that's from your kid's generation. So, so Vine then shuts down, right? Effectively? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And then, he, and then he moves over to YouTube. And then he makes some video that pisses a bunch of people off. And he gets booted off YouTube, right? Yeah. And then, and then he pivots and he decides to do what he's doing now, which is amazing, right? I mean, did you guys watch that fight, by the way? I did not watch it. No. I, I not, watched I the, the clips. yeah, the most, the highlights of it. Were there highlights? I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> there was highlights of Mayweather yeah. holding, you know, Logan Paul up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I thought I don't, I don't think it was fake. I think it was real. I, I think people that are saying that are just. I, I honestly think that was a real fight. I really do. Oh, I think it was too. I mean, if you look at Mayweather and his weights, and since he's fought, and then you know Logan. I mean, he's really trained for this. I mean, I follow him. And did, if did you, you see Logan? He was a freaking gorilla. Yeah. So you. Okay, well, anyway, so he then he moves to uh, YouTube. He gets basically deplatformed on YouTube. And then he says, he obviously had the epiphany. And now he's back on YouTube. He's got a great podcast. He does his podcast in her neighborhood, you know. So I'm going to try to get on his podcast, obviously. That's I'm impulsive, here, right? Impulsive. I, I, I'm, I'm angling it. You see what I'm doing yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you use Logan Paul in your keywords. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so then, then he, you know, then... To, he has to recreate himself. It's because time after time after time, he built his mansion on ground that somebody else owned. And that's the, that's the fear I have for most eight, well, entrepreneurs in general, but agents in particular, they're coming to this industry. They're getting bad advice. They're not thinking long-term. Most people never think long-term, right? Yeah. And, and so they're investing all this money and all this, I'm going to be the uh, Gary, Van, you know, Gary Vandercheck, admirable, great to listen to. Yeah, all, I'm not dishing on Gary, but they're copying what Gary was saying like five years ago. Yep. I'm going to be the heir of my YouTube town and all that. Well, what if somebody else does it, does it better, does more of it? And that's, and you think that that's somehow going to generate business uh, for you. You know, why don't you instead, if your goal is to make money and help people, why don't you instead just learn how to pick up the phone and do what you just said? Yep. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. It's your, your, it's your database. It's like, I look at our business, like what's the value? It's the, it's the list. It's the, the relationships that you have, how well do it's you the have them? It's yep. the reputation you built with your customers, not some fake brand that you built to try to convince your customer or something that you're not. A hundred percent, man. No. You get the difference? Su super well said. I, I mean, 
it, it's very, very interesting how people don't understand like every other ancillary thing, whether it's YouTube videos or whatever, it's to build that relationship. It's to build that reputation. It's to influence the trust. And, and hopefully over time, it just stacks and stacks and stacks if you can deliver on what you actually say. So you have to go hunting for the customer, so do I, right? But if you're in real estate, you really don't because the customer customer's already self-identified. You have to find an agent that wants to buy what you have for sale. What you have for sale, I'm sure, is amazing, right? So it's not difficult once they, you come in contact with them. But that's an expensive, time-consuming process. Yep. Real estate agents do not have to do any of that because there's people in their markets who self-identify saying, I want to do business with you. How would you like to right now turn on your computer and get a list of people who self-identified saying, I want to do business with you, a raw, a new list every single day? Make my How would, that be, would that be amazing? Yeah, what would you, you stop doing? I mean, seriously, you fire your sales clerk, right? Yeah. You get rid of all your ancillary markets. So why are realtors being taught this shit about they having to go out the internet, lead generate, build funnels when there's people that self-identify wanting to do business with them every day? But you even- guys get the I would say even for the audience to understand what I loved about your analogy of the spokes is you had seven different spokes. Like I'm a firm believer in diversification. Like you have to have a diversity in leads coming in. And like, even for us, right, our average caller will make, you know, these are their minimum requirements for people listening. 200 dials a day or over four hours of phone time or three new customers. So they have to hit one of those minimums each day. Right. So actually, they're gonna, let me let me edit what you just said. Yeah. I don't think that this. Who cares how many contacts? Just focus. Who cares how many dials? Just focus on the number of contacts. Yes, correct. But meaning we know. Here's the thing that we know. It's like the dials will produce the contacts, and if you uh, get if you get the contacts, uh, then the contacts will produce the hours, and if you get the hours, the hours will produce the three customers. Does that make sense? Like the uh, one thing they can control course. is the dial. So let's focus that in. Centers of influence of past clients, that is not somebody who's self-identified of wanting to sell a house. Correct. Doing circle prospecting, uh, if my internet drops me, I'll, I'll dial back in, so don't worry. If uh, Circle prospecting and all that stuff, those that, that is an easy call that requires no sales skill. And telling an agent, look, brand new, and you just want to you know, cut your teeth on calling people and getting more comfortable with it, and then you can call the higher yield people. I say skip that. Hmm. Go and call the high. So if you guys wanted to learn how to do push-ups, how would you learn how to do push-ups? Answer the question, please. I would get down and do a push-up. But why is it that agents that's the right answer? Why would <laughs> agents why would agents think I have to I have to take a bunch of classes? I have to get a designation. I have to read a bunch of books. I have to go to seminars. I have to work on my big why I'm going to do a push-up. I have Fear. to basically make green boards about doing my right. That's what this is all going back to. Hmm. And so what these you guys just said, it's fear. And, and now, I don't even know what time it is. So, <laughs> so, so there's two kinds. There's two kinds of fear in life, right? There's physical fear and there's psychological fear. Physical fear and psychological fear, actually, um, without getting into the, uh, you know, physiology of it, and uh, create the same physical and physiology uh, physiological rea- reaction inside our bodies. Hmm. For example, if you're walking along the street and you see, you know, you're walking with your friend or whatever, and they're accidentally about to slip off the curb and run into a, or maybe you, right? Something's going to happen. That's going to, you're going to trigger this circadian brain, lizard reaction, base human brain. And then you're going to all of a sudden create all this energy and you're going to become superhuman. And that fear is going to cause you to have myopia, solve the problem, save your life, save the life of your friend. Right. Right. So just by describing it, didn't you guys feel a little, a little bit of angst right here? Yeah. I got a little right. tense. <laughs> yeah. Me, me too. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so here's the thing. When most people pick up the phone, they have the exact, when they're new at it, exact same physiological reaction of the same fear that would happen if their life was being threatened. Wow. But what they have psychologically disconnected is one fear is real. The other fear is in your head that's manifested by your ego. So if you can acknowledge the fact, okay, I feel the fear. I'm about to pick up the phone. If you can acknowledge, oh, I, I see you, Miss, I feel you, Mister Fear. I see what you're trying to do. You're manifesting inside of me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow you to derail my ability to be effective on this call. That is the secret sauce for getting past that. fear, that's and, so and that hap- that's happened after Julie and I've done a billion coaching calls because you can talk about your dream board, your big why. You can, you know, find all this woo woo stuff. But none of it gets to the heart of it. And the heart of it is feeling fear is voluntary. Mm. You do not have to feel fear, right? Understand that. You do not have to feel fear. fear feeling fear is your, now that you're aware that you can know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to actually react to it. 
you will feel it. You cannot stop from feeling it. You know, if I had to get back on the phone right now and start making calls for prospecting listings, I would feel it too. I yeah. would, but I wouldn't react to it. I would feel it. And Such I would say, oh, point. there you are. I remember you, right? You don't want me to pick up the phone and do this. You want me to run to doing paid marketing and lead generation. That way I never have to overcome this fear. Does this make sense? No, yeah, it's so good, man. And it's uh, what I love also, it's it's like the frequency also, then it gets easier and easier and easier. It's just like lifting weights or anything you do. The more frequent you do it, the easier and easier and easier it gets. Well, the the more tolerant you become to, it always sucks. I'm saying no, yeah. It always sucks. It's like going to the gym. You guys probably going to the gym. I hate going to the gym, but it always sucks. Uh, But you, so it's one of our chapters in our book. Um, It's called doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Mm. And those three, those three elements are, are, you know, there's so much packed into that, but it's so powerful doing what you don't want to do. You don't want to pick up the phone. You don't want to call an unrepresented owner, AKA for sale by owner. So you're doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. So most people never want to do it. So that second one takes care of itself. And e, so this is the reason this has got my brain working on why when you were talking about uh, dials and all the rest of it. Yep. So people will go through the process of making your, your prescribed 200 dials, but they won't do the third element, which is at the highest level. So they'll say, I did the work, but I didn't get the result because they were, they did what they didn't want to do when they didn't want to do it, but they didn't actually do it with the intensity necessary to actually get the desired result. Great. And that is, and that ultimately goes back to the psychology of basically, you know, it, and again, I asked your, I asked him, you know, if you want to get better at pushups, how are you going to do it? You're freaking do pushups. What are most agents going to do? Mastermind, role play, getting ready to get started for the rest of their lives. And then they're going to fail out of the business in less than two years. Dude, it's so true. It's like what happens to everybody. It's like ourselves included. Every time you have this goal that you're setting out or thing you want to accomplish, we tend to, as humans, just put so much space in between us and the actual activity to get us to that goal because we make up all these excuses. got to get my logo, got to get the contract, got to whatever it is, got to go through this training. We put all this space between us and the actual, <laughs> instead of just going, nope, want to accomplish this? Let me start selling it. Let me actually get on yeah. the phone and start doing it. Well, it's, it's, it's like, you know, Julie's, Julie's the head coach of our company. And she truthfully, she wrote about 90% of our book. We came up with the outline, she did all the work. But so I always give credit where credit is due because when you look at the, it says Tim and Julie Harris. <laughs> when you look on Amazon, it just says Tim and her name doesn't even show up. <laughs> until you, it's, it, it's kind of the family joke that she doesn't think is funny. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's like, ultimately, you have people that will say like, who, you know, I want to learn how to prospect. Like, I'm going to turn on my air conditioning. Sorry, I'm in Puerto Rico. It gets hot. You're fine. So, so, you know, I want to get better at prospecting. And then what they'll say, they'll take a class. You got to role play every day. You got to work on your mindset, make your dream board and all this stuff. And it maybe has a place, maybe it doesn't. I'm not judging. Here's how you role play. You pick up the phone and you talk to this prospective seller because nothing is going to create the motivation to get better at that phone call than being under the pressure to actually get the result. Mm. Nothing is going to make, how do we sell 103 houses our first year? Uh, you know, we did, we went and talked to for sale phone owners and we called expires. That's what we did. What would we do if we got back in the business? Same damn thing mm. because it works, you mm. know? And I, I, so, so here's where, you know, why am I still doing this? <laughs> you know, after we've been doing this for, if we don't have to financially, it's because there's a lot of things out there that makes me feel, um, uh, beholden to the age. Like if I were, so Julie and I've been in the business for forever. So if the Tim and Julie from you know 25 years ago were trying to decide which path to take, I'm trying to prevent them from taking a path that has an incredibly high uh, rate of failure rate. Mm. And I'm trying to prevent them from believing that they can buy their business. I'm trying to make it so that they, the modern Tim and Julie, because they're out there somewhere, the modern Tim and Julie, they know that they have to build their business. They have to do... They have to earn the reputation. They cannot buy a brand. They have to do what they don't want to do when they don't want to do it at the highest level. And here's the other thing I would tell them. Over time, it's going to pay off in more ways financially and personally than you could possibly ever imagine if you do not try to shortcut it. There are no easy buttons. You cannot go to the gym and just take a blue pill and all of a sudden have muscles. You have to do the real work. And the same thing happens in life. And there are no shortcuts. Everybody, especially in real estate, loves a shortcut. You know, I'm not going to ever invest. I'm never going to learn how to basically invest my money. I'm not going to, I'm just going to buy Bitcoin and play the Bitcoin lottery until two weeks ago. It's half. Yeah, I tried. Yeah. Bad timing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Right. Exactly. But there's so many agents don't understand the amazing gift that all of us have as as being real estate agents. Like if you got, if you started a franchise, let's say, for example, um, a pie shop, 
rent the space, build it out, deal with all the codes, regulations, and rules, hire employees, make the damn pies, market the business. You have to do all this stuff and your margins are still going to be relatively small. Yep. That's a hard business. Any business, any business is hard to make money on. In real estate, you get a real estate license, which in most parts of the country will cost you less than $1,000. And then you can go out and list homes, which have, and you can operate, like if you're an EXP real estate agent, um, it, you can operate in your house, behind your computer, um, doing what we prescribe for you to do. And you can list other people's houses. And when they sell, you're going to make a margin on that house. That, and you had no carrying costs for that inventory. You guys get it? Yeah. You can bought list 10 houses worth $10 million. And when that stuff sells, you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it costs you nothing other than your skill set, your intellect, and your willingness to do the real work of real estate. To me, is there another business like that? Ooh. There isn't. It's amazing. And agents, the, totally the, best, the best business in the world, and what do they do? They overly complicate it, to your point. And that breaks my heart because they're being lied to. Largely, they're being lied to by people who are trying to sell malarkey. Mm. Man. Tim, we could go on forever, man. This so is good, dude. This is a great conversation. Really yeah. appreciate you coming on. Before we do close this thing out, let people know how they can find you. I know you mentioned your website, where you want people to go. Honestly, if they want to get a hold of me directly, they can, and I know you guys are going to think this isn't real, but it is. They can text me directly. You call, I will not answer, but you can text me directly and make your questions really short. And usually I get back within a day or two, sometimes right away. And you can text me directly at 512 0206 Five one two seven five eight zero two zero six. It's awesome. And look, if they want to talk about coaching, real estate business, or joining EXP Realty. Julie and I would love to talk to them about any of those categories. That's awesome. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. I want to include all of those links in the show notes for this episode over at StayPaidPodcast.com. Tim, thanks again for being on, and thank you all for listening. If you're looking for ways to support the show, there's only two ways we ask. The first is to head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review, and a review. Did I say five star review? Yeah, five star. And a comment. In a on that review. And I mean, it can way, be less than five stars if you feel it needs to be less than five stars. But no, we I, I've appreciate told people the five before, stars. Do fi if you don't no. like the show, do five stars and take out your <laughs> anger in the comments. Stars. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to, I'm non discriminatory. I want to encourage reviews, people. Right, no, right. Except on iTunes, if it's not a five star review, it doesn't like get you. Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. That's, that's true. Five star review. Yeah. And the best way to help <laughs> with the show is to tell a friend. You can get hold of me or Luke at podcast at remindermedia.com or find us on Instagram. We're at Stay Paid Podcast for this episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acre. Incredible episode. Just awesome. So appreciative of Tim coming on. Once you go back and listen to it, here's your action on it, right? We try to take a podcast and we try to boil it down to, hey, what's the activity that you can literally implement today or tomorrow in your business to make a difference? And I think you all know what I'm about to say. Make your calls. Pick up the phone. I loved, you guys know, right? Josh and I sell marketing products. We want to help you with your marketing. We would rather you, if you can't, if you have to choose between our marketing products and making your phone calls, make your phone calls. Because guess what? The faster you make your phone calls, the faster you'll close deals, the faster you'll have money to actually spend on marketing, then come back and see us. Making your phone calls is the action. I love what Tim said. Doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Remember, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry is top producers take action. Take action on that today. <laughs> <laughs>